It is the fourth day of the 21-day public lockdown in Zimbabwe, a country that has experienced economic hardships, including hyperinflation, for the last couple of years. To give us the current state of affairs, I'm joined by a media personality, Luveneko Palerinyatwa, best in Harare, Zimbabwe, to give us the latest in her country. Thank you so much, Luveneko. Hey, Ethan, how are you? Very good. Thank you so much for joining us. Sure, thanks for having me. Yes. Now, we know that uh, Zimbabwe has reported one uh, death of coronavirus. Um, this is Zororo Makamba, who happens to be a colleague in the industry. First of all, sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah. So what is the situation like in Zimbabwe? Okay. So as you said, we're on our fourth day of a national lockdown de mm -hmm. declared by His Excellency President Emerson Mnangagwa. So we started on Monday mm -hmm. and we're four days in. And the lockdown has been good for many reasons. The main reason is because people have um, been conscientized about coronavirus very quickly. Mm -hmm. As you might know, it's never easy to get information out to peri-urban areas and rural areas, because mm -hmm. sometimes you know the information gets there a bit slower. So with a national lockdown where, for example, public transport has been cut off, people were obviously made aware of this very quickly, that if you didn't know what coronavirus was or you weren't aware what was really going on globally because you live in a rural community with limited access to information, the fact that you can no longer move around was a big wake-up call. The fact that the local bars are closed and all of that, it really made people wake up quite quickly. And as you also led with, the death of Zororo um, also made people realize that this is not something that we can, we can um, look at as though it can't sweep out the nation, right? So um, all those elements combined have really helped the lockdown and people have been very cooperative with the lockdown. There hasn't even been need for military presence on the streets. Mm -hmm. I think on the first day, a lot of people expected that there's gonna be police or, or, or army um, or law enforcers all over the streets. But I think just the announcement by the president and the awareness of how serious this is as a global pandemic made Zimbabweans just you know comply. However, today there was a little bit more free movement. Um, so I don't know what that means, um, but I think also when you hear of eight confirmed cases in Zimbabwe versus the thousands in other countries, uh, maybe people are thinking, well, maybe it's not here. Um, but I think there is a genuine need and a genuine concern from citizens that they don't want it to penetrate our society the way that it has annihilated other communities in the world. So there is no panic in Zimbabwe right now? about coronavirus? Not really, you know, um, the supermarkets um, were full over the weekend because the president announced the lockdown on Friday evening. So Saturday and Sunday, there was a bit of panic buying, but not to a great extent. Also because it's financial, right? How many people can afford to go and buy two trolleys of food, you know, just um, overnight? So it comes down to what people can manage and economies of scale. Mm -hmm. So there is, um, there's concern. I wouldn't call it all round panic, not just yet. And even when you do see the few people out, um, there are some that are masked, a few that wear gloves, but not everybody is, is, is terrified just yet. Mm -hmm. there, there are some fears that this lockdown might actually uh, cause severe implications on the already hurting economy in Zimbabwe. Uh, what is your take on that? Look, I mean, industry has definitely been affected, and that's a global thing. It's that's no question that there are many companies that have had to fold and restructure. So, and the biggest problem for us, and the same with many African countries, is our large informal sector, where there are people who live hand to mouth. Forget the big producers, okay? Um, they obviously, especially essential industries, the people that are making bread, the ones that need to stay open are staying open. But we mustn't forget the population who, if they don't sell those 20 tomatoes, or if they don't sell that spare car part mm -hmm. in that day, their family's not going to eat. So there is that concern um, more for SMEs and also for the unemployed, um, where over 95% of the population is unemployed and they're being told you can no longer trade mm -hmm. during this lockdown. So that hasn't yet actually imploded or we haven't yet seen um, any um, I don't know, mass action about that. But there have been concerns from interviews that you see you know, through news that um, the people are asking for some kind of support from government mm -hmm. to say, all right, we can't sell, but how are we going to eat? Um, and also water is a big problem in Zimbabwe. So people are just wanting that kind of government intervention. Um, but you find that people are forthcoming. You know, a lot of the universities have taken on roles to produce sanitizers, to produce face masks. So that's also quite encouraging that even the students are taking initiatives and uh, people are coming together and the preparedness is what we are seeing 
it's not panic, but it's, well, let's prepare. Remember, Zimbabwe has also recovered from things like cholera outbreaks, typhoid mm. outbreaks. We've been through a lot, you know, so we we know that these things can turn bad very quickly. But it's nice to see hands on deck from private and public sector. OK, lastly, um, you probably are following news on how the EU is coming together to support each other and controlling the spread of coronavirus as an African. How can we fight this together as a continent? You know, it's unfortunate that I'll say this, but I hope you understand it for how I see it, mm. is that right now, it's kind of each man for himself and God for us all. Um, as African countries, the only way we can protect one another is what many countries have done, which is close the borders to each other, mm. leave passages open where there's need for relief in terms of food or in terms of protective gears for doctors and frontline um, workers and essential workers. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's very difficult for us to intervene for each other right now. Um, it is very, very helpful that we have donations from countries, from China, from you know the WHO, you know, the UN has been a very pivotal factor in most of our countries. But I think neighbor to neighbor right now, all we can do is shield each other from one another until this gets better. That's really where we are. Ruven Echo, thank you so much for joining us here on Rwanda Television. No problem. No problem. Thanks for having me. Have a good and night. And you stay safe as well. Stay safe. <laughs> sure. Stay safe. Thank you so much for that. All right. Bye-bye. Cheers. Thank you.